Adam alayhi salatu was salam and his wife Hawa alayhi salam, they had many children. And as I said, they had 40 children, 20 pairs. And the pair were not allowed to intermarry. But those who were from a different pair were allowed to marry the others from another pair and so on. And he saw some of his grandchildren and his great grandchildren and his progeny and his offspring. And it is reported that he'd seen thousands of them, thousands of his children. And they had gone various parts of the globe and so many different places they had gone to. And Adam alayhi salam used to constantly remind them and he used to tell them. And some of his children continued that reminder. One of them was a child known as Sheath. Sheath alayhi salam, we call him alayhi salam. He was also a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that he carried the message of his father. One narration says that there were 104 psalms that were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These parchments that were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From them, 50 were revealed to Sheikh alayhi salatu was salam. So he was also given guidance and he was told to guide the people. And as time passed, it became more difficult because they were further away from Adam alayhi salam. It's like, for example, when your father has suffered to make his money and you were there watching him suffer and watching him go through turbulence and turmoil, it is easier for you to appreciate that. But when your children come and they've only seen wealth, for them to appreciate it is very difficult. And this is why wealth generally, it's not an Islamic law, but people who have, Muslims who have studied, have said it does not last for more than three generations without actually depleting totally. Three to four generations after that, it has to deplete because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan. And his plan is such that wealth does not stay in the same hands for long. It will move and it will, can, it will go on and on. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and contentment. So Adam alayhi salatu was salam, mashallah. He'd seen so many of his children and he was grooming his children also to continue the message. He used to call them regularly and tell them that this is what you need to do and that is what you need to do and so on. And this is how shaitan, they used to gather together and he used to remind them how shaitan led him astray and how shaitan was very jealous and so on. So there is something for us to learn from this as well. We need to gather our children and we need to constantly remind them not only of our beginnings but of the messenger of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us have sat with our children and told them, do you know, this is what Allah requires. This is how we should be dressing. This is the benefit of this. This is the benefit of that. This is the downfall that one will taste if they do this and if they do that. And look at this example and that example. Spend the time with your children. It is the sunnah of the prophets. All the prophets, may Allah's peace be upon them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something very interesting again, where Adam alayhi salatu was salam got sick. He got ill. He got ill at a certain stage. And look at Allah's plan. Allah made him wish for something. Wish for what? Certain fruits he had eaten in Jannah. He ate some fruits in paradise. He still remembered the taste. So he was wishing for it, making dua to Allah, saying, Ya Allah, I'm wishing for these fruits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him that at a certain place, you will find something. Not that you will find the fruits. But at a certain place, you will find something. But he was unhealthy. He was not healthy enough to go there. So he decided to send some of his children. He says, go to that place and you will find something for me there. So when they went there, they found some angels. A group of angels. What did they have with them? They were dressed in white and they had some tools with them. There was a pick and a shovel and tools to dig. Now these tools were new to the children of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. They looked. These angels told the children of Adam, we are angels and we want you to go back to your father. He is ill and his time is up. Allahu Akbar. He is ill and his time is up. So they walked with, Adam, with the children of Adam alayhi salam back to Adam alayhi salam. And as they entered, as they entered, Hawa, may peace be upon her. She recognized this angel is the angel of death. The angel of death. So she quickly started going behind Adam alayhi salatu was salam and he says, no, no, no. Don't worry, move away. I was created before you. I was created before you. He's going to go. 
He was not worried. That, ah, now why am I going and so on? He was reminded. In fact, he told the angel of death when he saw him. He says, but don't I have 40 more years to go? We made mention of this a few days ago. The angel says, don't you remember you gave it to Dawood? Alayhi salam. And he says, no, I don't remember. I don't remember. And after he was reminded, he says, no problem. However, he first gathered his children. Look at this. He gathered his children on his deathbed. And he reminded them saying, Allah will send messengers to you. He will not leave you alone. He will send messengers to you and messages. These messengers will come. Different languages, different names, different dialects. But their message will all be one calling you to worship one Allah, the one who made you and to stay away from the devil and shaitan and iblis and to be careful that the biggest crime anyone can commit is to associate a partner with the creator. And after he reminded his children, the angels took his soul away and he passed away. And he passed away happily. He was happy to go. Why was he happy to go? Very interesting. I think that's a lesson. When I was reading about it, really it brought tears to my eyes. He was happy to go because he knew he is going back to that heaven that he came from. He knew he's going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was happy to go because he had problems here on the earth. He had tests. He had difficulties. He first hunted for his wife, then he had the problems with his children and so on. And now he had to taste death, but that death was getting him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from this, there is a narration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Tuhfatul mu'minil mawtu. The gift of a true believer is death. Why? You're going back to your maker, your creator. There's no more inflation. There's no more robberies. There's no more power cuts. There's no more, you know, credit and debt and people following you and running behind you and sickness and cough and what have you. Everything ends. It stops. There is only justice and goodness. And for you is what you wish and what you want and what you, whatever you desire. I always give the example of a child who works hard at school. You work very hard at school. For what? In order to get a prize. So now, how are you going to get the prize if you don't want to attend the prize giving? Allahu Akbar. You got to go there and then you will shake the hand and get your prize. If you don't go there, how are you going to get your prize? So for us, we've been promised, read Salah, you get this. Give your zakah, you do this. Dress appropriately, this will happen for you. Do that, this will happen. Where are we going to get all these prizes? You need to go to the stage. Where is the stage? You need to die first and then you get to the stage. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Simple to understand. But still, when we die or someone dies, we become depressed and we start mourning to the degree that we question what Allah's decree was. How can we do that? It is natural to miss someone. It is natural to shed tears of mercy because you're going to miss them. But we never question the decree of Allah. Whatever Allah does is the best. It is the best. When Allah has taken a person away, whether it is in a car crash or after sickness or suddenly or whatever it is, it is the best that Allah could have done for that particular person. We need to know this, especially as mu'mineen, as believers. So we should not depress ourselves. If they have gone, we are going very, very soon. So Adam alayhi salatu was salam went. When he went, what happened? The angels had come with the tools. They took the children of Adam alayhi salatu was salam a little bit of a distance and they dug a, a, a proper grave and they washed the body of Adam alayhi salam with water. They enshrouded him properly and they led the salah or the prayer, the janaza of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. One narration says that Jibreel instructed sheath to lead the salah and another narration says the angels themselves led that salah. Only Allah knows but the salah was done and he was buried and once he was buried the angels looked at the children of Adam alayhi salatu was salam and says Hadihi sunnatukum. this is the way you shall do it when anyone from amongst you passes away so that is how we were taught to enshroud and to leave a gap I was speaking to someone a few moments ago in fact a few days before Ramadan 
And we were talking about how amazing it is that the grave of a Muslim, you have a gap. You, have a, you are enshrouded in a shroud and then you are placed in the grave and the wooden pieces or the bricks are not put on you. But there is a gap and then quite a big gap and then there is the wooden pieces and on top of that is the soil. Subhanallah. Do you know one of the benefits of that is it allows for the decomposure of that body in the soil because of the presence of oxygen in that hollow. If there was no oxygen, what happens? Let me tell you what happens. Look at the mass graves in the globe. When the people are buried and the, the sand is straight onto them. What happens? You find the bone even after a thousand years, you might find some of it has not yet decomposed because the, it is all there still. The skulls are there. Everything is there. Whereas if you bury Islamically the proper way by leaving that gap, who knew that there would be oxygen trapped in there, which is needed for that to decompose? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So now that it decomposes completely, you dig it back up. Nine months later, there is nothing remaining there. Illa ajbad dhanab. The hadith speaks about the last small little portion at the bottom of your spine, the conical, the little cone shaped bone. Part of it remains and that is the seed of man from which you, we will grow as I men made mention of the other day. So this is how we are to be buried. Where were we taught from? We were taught by the angels from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amazing story. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a deep understanding. The question, where was he buried? It's a question. Some narrations say he was buried fil hind, close to where he had descended. Whereas other narrations say that he was buried in Mecca by the mount known as Jabalu Abi Qubais. Just outside where the Haram is now, he was buried somewhere there. But Allah knows best. All we know is he was definitely buried. And I had spoken about Sheith alayhi salam being another Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Insha'Allah, we will get to more of the stories of these messengers. The last question I have is, how many messengers were there? How many messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We don't know the exact figure. In the Quran, 25 are mentioned. In the Quran, there are 25 names of the messengers. But... Some narration of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam makes mention of different figures, the largest of which is 124,000. Imagine, 124,000 messengers. We don't know really whether that figure is correct, but we have a rough idea that there are so many. The Quran says, مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَصَصْنَا عَلَيْكَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَمْ نَقْصُصْ عَلَيْكَ there are messengers, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa whom we have told you about and we've related to you their stories. And some whom we have not even told you about, which means there are so many, only Allah knows the exact number. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson until we continue again, inshaAllah, tomorrow we say, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad, subhanallahi bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfirukum. Introducing the top-rated Islamic app in the world, One Islam TV. The app offers a smooth, immersive viewing experience with user-friendly features and seamless interface. Discover the power of technology for the purpose of spreading the light of Islam to every corner of the world. Download the One Islam TV app now. Mm -hmm.